Across cultures, the voices heard by people with schizophrenia aren't universal in tone or temperament. In the US, many report angry, accusatory voices, while in India and Africa, the voices are often kinder and more reassuring. This difference isn't just chance, it reveals the deep imprint of culture on our inner experiences. In Western settings, where individualism and high personal expectations prevail, auditory hallucinations can mirror a harsh internal dialogue. Voices may adopt a tone of criticism that reflects both societal pressures and the stigma around mental illness. Here, the angry voices often echo a narrative of failure and self-blame. Conversely, in regions like India and Africa, where communal values and spiritual interpretations are more common, the voices tend to be less hostile. In these cultures, unusual sensory experiences are sometimes seen as manifestations of a spiritual presence or ancestral guidance, leading them to be perceived as caring or even protective. Neuroscience shows that the process behind auditory hallucinations involves the brain misattributing its own inner speech as coming from an external source. While this fundamental mechanism remains constant, the script, it plays out as heavily colored by cultural norms, language, and expectations, altering how those voices sound and feel. For many in Western societies, the inner narrative is steeped in criticism and perfectionism. The result is a neurobiological process that amplifies negative, angry tones. In contrast, regions with narratives that value interconnectedness and gentle guidance allow for inner voices that are less confrontational and more nurturing. Cultural context also shapes the meaning attached to these experiences. In communities where unusual phenomena are woven into a broader tapestry of myth and spirituality, auditory hallucinations may be interpreted as messages, ones that counsel, warn, or comfort, reducing the emotional distress often seen when voices are perceived as hostile. These cultural distinctions have real clinical implications. Culturally sensitive therapeutic approaches that acknowledge the patient's worldview can help individuals reframe their auditory experiences. By tapping into local narratives and support networks, clinicians may ease the distress associated with the voices and foster a more empowering interpretation. Ultimately, the phenomenon illustrates the intricate dance between neurobiology and culture. While impaired self-monitoring in the brain may spark the experience of hearing voices, it's the cultural lens that determines whether these voices incite fear or offer solace. Embracing this nuance is key to understanding and healing in a global context.